Muhammad Mustafa al Baradei Arabic, MEHMD MSDFE al Brady Muhammad Mustafa al Barada, Egyptian Arabic pronunciation, M. Ash Hemid Mos Tf E L B Ash 80, born 17 June 1942, is an Egyptian law scholar and diplomat who was the last vice president of Egypt serving on an interim basis from 14 July 2013 until his resignation on 14 August 2013. He was the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. IAEA, an intergovernmental organization under the auspices of the United Nations, from 1997 to 2009. He and the IAEA were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2005. El Baradei was also prominently featured in the Western press regarding relatively recent politics in Egypt, particularly the 2011 revolution which ousted President Hosni Mubarak, and the 2013 Egyptian coup d'état. Family and personal life El Baradei was born and raised in Giza Governorate, Greater Cairo, Egypt. He was one of five children of Mustafa El Baradei, an attorney who headed the Egyptian Bar Association. El Baradei's father was also a supporter of democratic rights in Egypt, supporting a free press and an independent judiciary. El Baradei is married to Ida El Kashef, an early childhood teacher. They have two children, a daughter, Layla, who is a lawyer living in London, and a son, Mustafa, who is an IT manager living in Cairo. They also have two granddaughters, Maya and Nina, a native speaker of Egyptian Arabic. El Baradei is also fluent in English and French, and knows enough German to get by, at least in Vienna. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Education and early career. El Baradei earned a bachelor's degree in law from the University of Cairo in 1962, a master's degree in international law at the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva, and a JSD in international law at the New York University School of Law in 1974. His thesis was titled, The Right of Passage Through Straits in Time of Peace. His diplomatic career began in 1964 in the Ministry of External Affairs, where he served in the permanent missions of Egypt to the United Nations in New York and in Geneva, in charge of political, legal, and arms control issues. From 1974 to 1978, he was a special assistant to the foreign minister. In 1980, he became a senior fellow in charge of the International Law Program at the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. From 1981 to 1987, he was also an adjunct professor of international law at the New York University School of Law. In 1984, El Baradei became a senior staff member of the IAEA Secretariat, serving as the agency's legal advisor and assistant director general for external relations El Baradei is currently a member of both the International Law Association and the American Society of International Law. Topic: <laughs> Public career as IAEA Director General, 1997 to 2009. El Baradei began to serve as Director General of the IAEA, which is based in Vienna, on the 1st of December 1997, succeeding Hans Blix of Sweden. He was re-elected for two more four-year terms in 2001 and in 2005. His third and last term ended in November 2009. El Baradei's tenure has been marked by high-profile, non-proliferation issues, which include the inspections in Iraq preceding the March 2003 invasion, and tensions over the nuclear program of Iran. Topic. First term as Director General After being appointed by the IAEA General Conference in 1997, El Baradei said in his speech that, for international organizations to enjoy the confidence and support of their members, they have to be responsive to members' needs, show concrete achievements, conduct their activities in a cost-effective manner, and respect a process of equitable representation, transparency, and open dialogue. Just a couple of months before El Baradei took office, the model additional protocol was adopted, creating a new environment for IAEA verification by giving it greater authority to look for undeclared nuclear activities. When in office, El Baradei launched a program to establish integrated safeguards. 
combining the IAEA's comprehensive safeguard agreements with the newly adopted additional protocol. In his statement to the General Conference in 1998, he called upon all states to conclude the additional protocol. One of the main purposes of the strengthened safeguards system can be better achieved with global adherence. I would, therefore, urge all states with outstanding safeguards agreements to conclude them, and I would also urge all states to accelerate their consideration of the model additional protocol and enter into consultations with the agency at the earliest possible opportunity. We should work together to ensure that, by the year 2000, all states will have concluded outstanding safeguards agreements and also the additional protocol. Elberade repeated this call through his years as the Director General of the IAEA. In November 2009, 93 countries had additional protocols in force. Elberade's first term ended in November 2001, just two months after the terrorist attacks of 9 11. These attacks made clear that more needed to be done to protect nuclear material and installations from theft or a terrorist attack. Consequently, El Baradé established a nuclear security program to combat the risk of nuclear terrorism by assisting member states to strengthen the protection of their nuclear and radioactive material and installations, the Nuclear Security Fund. Topic. Second term as Director General One of the major issues during Elberade's second term as the Director General of the IAEA was the agency's inspections in Iraq. Elberade disputed the U.S. rationale for the 2003 invasion of Iraq from the time of the 2002 Iraq disarmament crisis, when he, along with Hans Blix, led a team of UN weapons inspectors in Iraq. Elberade told the UN Security Council in March 2003 that documents purporting to show that Iraq had tried to acquire uranium from Niger were not authentic. In an October 2003 interview published in the Cairo Times, he said, The ultimate sense of security will be when we come to recognize that we are all part of one human race. Our primary allegiance is to the human race and not to one particular color or border. I think the sooner we renounce the sanctity of these many identities and try to identify ourselves with the human race the sooner we will get a better world and a safer world." El Baradé described the U.S. invasion of Iraq as a glaring example of how, in many cases, the use of force exacerbates the problem rather than solves it. El Baradé further stated that we learn from Iraq that an inspection takes time, that we should be patient, that an inspection can, in fact, work and that he had been validated. In concluding that Saddam Hussein had not revived his nuclear weapons program, in a 2004 op-ed piece on the dangers of nuclear proliferation, in The New York Times the 12th of February 2004, El Baradé stated that W.E. must abandon the unworkable notion that it is morally reprehensible for some countries to pursue weapons of mass destruction, yet morally acceptable for others to rely on them for security, and indeed to continue to refine their capacities and postulate plans for their use. Quote. He went on to say, If the world does not change course, we risk self-destruction. Third and final term as Director General. The United States initially voiced opposition to his election to a third four-year term in 2005. In a May 2005 interview with the staff of the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Lawrence Wilkerson, the chief of staff to former U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell, charged former Under Secretary of State for Arms Control and International Security John Bolton with an underhanded campaign to unseat El Baradé. Mr. Bolton overstepped his bounds in his moves and gyrations to try to keep El Baradé from being reappointed as IAEA head. Wilkerson said. The Washington Post reported in December 2004 that the Bush administration had intercepted dozens of El Baradé's phone calls with Iranian diplomats and was scrutinizing them for evidence that they could use to force him out. IAEA spokesman Mark Gwozdeki said the agency worked on the assumption that one or more entities may be listening to our conversations. It's not how we would prefer to work, but it is the reality. At the end of the day, we have nothing to hide. He said. Iran responded to the Washington Post reports by accusing the U.S. of violating international law in intercepting the communications. The United States was the only country to oppose El Baradé's reappointment and eventually failed to win enough support from other countries to oust El Baradé. 
On 9 June 2005, after a meeting between U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice and El Baradé, the United States dropped its objections. Among countries that supported El Baradé were China, Russia, Germany, and France. China praised his leadership and objectivity, and supported him for doing substantial fruitful work, which has maintained the agency's role and credit in international non-proliferation and promoted the development of peaceful use of nuclear energy. His work has been universally recognized in the international community. China appreciates Mr. L. Baraday's work and supports his re-election as the agency's director general. France, Germany, and some developing countries, have made clear their support for El Baraday as well. Russia issued a strong statement in favor of re-electing him as soon as possible. El Baraday was unanimously reappointed by the IAEA board on 13 June 2005. Topic. Comments on no fourth term In 2008, El Baraday said that he would not be seeking a fourth term as director general. Moreover, he said, in an IAEA document, that he was not available for a further term in office. In its first five rounds of voting, the IAEA Board of Governors was split in its decision regarding the next director general. El Baraday said, I just hope that the agency has a candidate acceptable to all North, South, East, West because that is what is needed. After several rounds of voting, on 3 July 2009, Mr. Yukia Amano, Japanese ambassador to the IAEA, was elected as the next IAEA Director General. El Baraday and U.S. relations El Baraday, leader of the National Coalition for Change, has been a major voice for democratic change in Egypt since 2009 and was a significant leader during the recent protests. However, he has a rocky history with the U.S. government and supports some policies that do not support current U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. During his tenure as Director General of the IAEA 1997-2009, for instance, El Baraday downplayed claims of possible military dimensions to Iran's nuclear program, which undermined U.S. efforts to press Iran over its safeguards violations. According to a 3 July 2003 article in Time magazine, El Baraday also maintained that Iraq's nuclear program had not restarted before the 2003 Iraq War, contradicting claims by the Bush administration. He told the German news magazine Der Spiegel on 12 July 2010 that he wanted to open the Gaza Strip, Egypt border and accused Israel of being the biggest threat to the Middle East because of their nuclear weapons. El Baraday has called for international criminal investigation of former Bush administration officials for their roles in planning the war on Iraq. Topic multinational control of the nuclear fuel cycle In an op-ed that he wrote for The Economist in 2003, El Baraday outlined his idea for the future of the nuclear fuel cycle. His suggestion was to limit the processing of weapon-usable material in civilian nuclear programs, as well as the production of new material, by agreeing to restrict these operations exclusively to facilities under multinational control. Also, nuclear energy systems should be deployed that, by design, avoid the use of materials that may be applied directly to making nuclear weapons. He concluded by saying that considerable advantages would be gained from international cooperation in these stages of the nuclear fuel cycle. These initiatives would not simply add more non-proliferation controls, to limit access to weapon-usable nuclear material, they would also provide access to the benefits of nuclear technology for more people in more countries. Non-nuclear weapon states have been reluctant to embrace these proposals due to a perception that the commercial or strategic interests of nuclear weapon states motivate the proposals, a perception that the proposals produce a dependency on a limited number of nuclear fuel suppliers, and a concern that the proposal restricts their unalienable right to use nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. Topic technical cooperation and cancer control El Baraday's work does not only concentrate on nuclear verification. Another very important aspect is development through nuclear technology. In 2004, El Baraday sponsored a comprehensive global initiative, the Program of Action for Cancer Therapy, PACT, to fight cancer. In one of his statements, El Baraday said, a silent crisis in cancer treatment persists in developing countries and is intensifying every year. 
At least 50 to 60 percent of cancer victims can benefit from radiotherapy, but most developing countries do not have enough radiotherapy machines or sufficient numbers of specialized doctors and other health professionals. In the first year of operation, PACT provided cancer treatment capacity in seven member states, using the IAEA's share of the 2005 Nobel Peace Prize. In his speech to the 2008 General Conference, El Baradei said that development activities remain central to our work. Our resources have long been insufficient to keep pace with requests for support, and we have increasingly made use of partnerships with other organizations, regional collaborations and country-to-country -country support. I again emphasize that technical cooperation is not a bargaining chip, part of a political balance between the development and safeguards activities of the agency. Topic International Crisis Group El Baradé served on the Board of Trustees of the International Crisis Group, a non-governmental organization that enjoys an annual budget of over $15 million and is bankrolled by the Carnegie, the Ford Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as George Soros Open Society Institute. Soros himself serves as a member of the organization's executive committee. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Egyptian politics. Topic: <inaudible> 2011 Egyptian Revolution. During the early days of the Egyptian Revolution, El Baradei's speechwriter and longtime associate Laban Koblentz and other IAEA colleagues of El Baradei contradicted the notion that El Baradei had only recently become engaged in Egyptian politics, saying he had never relinquished his focus on human rights deficiencies in his home country. Koblentz noted that El Baradei had first confronted Mubarak in early 2003, during the lead up to the Iraq War, as well as on subsequent encounters. Koblentz also pointed out the role that social media played in convincing El Baradei that the young people of Egypt were ready for change. It was really this last 14 months, where someone I knew as not being particularly computer savvy, taught himself to use Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and started to do in virtual space what was forbidden to do by the Mubarak regime, the freedom of assembly by large groups. While speaking at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government on 27 April 2010, El Baradei joked that he is looking for a job and is seeking to be an agent of change and an advocate for democracy within Egyptian politics he also made clear that his wife is not very enthusiastic about any potential run on the 27th of January 2011 El Baradei returned to Egypt amid ongoing turmoil with the largest mass protests in 30 years which had begun 2 days earlier on the 25th of January 2011 El Baradei declared himself ready to lead a transitional government if that was the will of the nation saying that if people want me to lead the transition, I will not let them down. Subsequently, when he joined protesters Friday afternoon prayers, police fired water cannons at him and his supporters. They used batons to beat some of El Baradei's supporters, who surrounded him to protect him. On 28 January 2011, El Baradei was reported to have been placed under house arrest in Egypt. However, the next day, when he was interviewed by Al Jazeera, he said that he was unaware of any such arrest. Later on, El Baradei arrived in Tahrir Square to join thousands of other protesters against the Mubarak regime and spoke directly to the people, stating that they have taken back their rights and that they cannot go back. A number of Egyptian political movements have called on El Baradei to form a transitional government. El Baradei has also stated that the people of Egypt want the regime to fall. In response to the appointment of Omar Suleiman as the new vice president of Egypt, El Baradei stated that it was a hopeless, desperate attempt by Mubarak to stay in power. I think that it is loud and clear. less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 that Mubarak has to leave today. Additionally, El Baradei restated his position that, when Egypt does become a democratic nation, there is no reason to believe that a democracy in Egypt would not lead to a better relationship with the U.S. based on respect and equity. The Guardian reported that El Baradei has been mandated by the Muslim Brotherhood and four other opposition groups to negotiate an interim national salvation government. However, BBC reports that the Muslim Brotherhood, the largest opposition party banned by Mubarak's regime, has not consented to the choice of El Baradei as the representative of the opposition. The people have not appointed Muhammad El Baradei to become a spokesman of them. The Muslim Brotherhood is much stronger than Muhammad El Baradei as a person. 
and we do not agree that he should represent this movement. The movement is represented by itself, and it will appoint a committee to delegate its representatives. His appointment is controversial largely because of the long periods that he has spent outside the country. His appointment is seen as a recognition of the importance of various Western nations' support of the revolts. Topic: <laughs> Possible presidential candidacy. Elberadei's name has been circulated by opposition groups since 2009 as a possible candidate to succeed President Hosni Mubarak in Egypt's highest executive position. Elberadei did not make any clear statements regarding his intentions to run for the office. However, he has demanded that certain conditions be met to ensure fair elections accompanied by changes to the constitution that will allow more freedom for independent candidates before he would actually consider running for the presidency. Several opposition groups have endorsed him, considering him a neutral figure who could transition the country to greater democracy. On 24 February 2010, Elberadei met with several opposition leaders and notable intellectuals at his home in Cairo. The meeting was concluded with an announcement for the formation of a new non-party political movement called the National Association for Change. The movement aims for general reforms in the political scene and mainly Article 76 of the Egyptian Constitution, which places restrictions on free presidential elections, especially when it comes to independent candidates. The banned political group, the Muslim Brotherhood, was represented at the meeting by one of its key figures, however, its stand in accepting a non-member of its group as a representative is still unclear. It is also unknown whether Amr Musa, the head of the Arab League who met with Elberadei a day earlier, will be part of the new movement. On the 7th of March 2011, it was announced that Elberadei intended to run for the presidential elections. This intention was later clearly stated in a live interview by Elberadei to the On TV channel, the 10th of March 2011. On the 14th of January 2012, Elberadei declared he would not run for president. On the 4th of July 2013, Elberadei was mentioned as a favorite to head a transitional Egyptian government amid the 2013 Egyptian coup d'état as the prime minister. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> President of Constitution Party. On the 28th of April 2012, Elberadei launched the Constitution Party (DL). This date was too late to allow him to run for the presidency. The party claims itself as liberal, in order to protect and promote the principles and objectives of the 25 January 2011 revolution according to liberal ideals. El Baradei became a prominent figure of the Egyptian opposition. On 24 November, DL formed together with the secular parties the National Salvation Front, a coalition of the primary opposition parties against President Mohamed Morsi's decrees. On 5 December 2012, he became the coordinator of National Salvation Front. Vice President Mohamed El Baradei was involved in the coup d'état that toppled democratically elected President Mohamed Morsi amid mass protests against the perceived mismanagement of the country, the refusal of Morsi to form a coalition government, and the authoritarian influence of the Muslim Brotherhood on what had been a secular Muslim majority state for decades. El Baradei was one of the opposition figures who met with Defense Minister Abdul Fattah al Sisi in the days before the coup. He was described by Reuters as the designated negotiator. For the political opposition, El Baradei gave support to the military's plan to oust Morsi and begin implementing a political road map for Egypt, including the installation of Supreme Constitutional Court Chief Justice Adli Mansur as interim president of Egypt. He was present when General Sisi announced the temporary suspension of the constitution and the removal of Morsi from power. In the political transition following Norsi's ejection from the presidency, El Baradei was immediately mentioned as a candidate for interim prime minister. He reportedly denied interest in the position at first. There were reports that El Baradei would be named prime minister, which were retracted after objections by the Noor party, on 7 July. He was sworn in as vice president, responsible for international relations, on 14 July 2013. The 14th of August government raids and resignation. 
On 14 August 2013, following a violent crackdown by security forces on supporters of deposed President Mohamed Morsi, in which at least 525 people were killed, El Baradei resigned as vice president. In his resignation letter, El Baradei stated, I always saw peaceful alternatives for resolving this societal wrangling. Certain solutions were proposed, which could have led to national conciliation, but things have come this far. It has become difficult for me to continue bearing the responsibility for decisions with which I do not agree and the consequences of which I fear. I cannot bear the responsibility for a single drop of blood before God, before my own conscience or the citizens. He then left the country for Vienna, where he was previously based in his UN capacity. After his resignation, an Egyptian law professor at Helwan University, Sayed 8 EQ, filed lawsuit against El Baradei, accusing him of a betrayal of trust. As 8 EQ told Reuters, Dr. El Baradei was entrusted with this position and he had a duty to go back to those who entrusted him and ask to resign. The case was heard in Cairo in October that year and dismissed. Other activities Mohamed El Baradei is a member of the Global Leadership Foundation, an organization that works to support democratic leadership, prevent and resolve conflict through mediation and promote good governance in the form of democratic institutions, open markets, human rights and the rule of law. It does so by making available, discreetly and in confidence, the experience of former leaders to today's national leaders. It is a not-for-profit organization composed of former heads of government, senior governmental and international organization officials who work closely with heads of government on governance-related issues of concern to them. Topic. Awards During his tenure as Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, El Baradei received many awards for his efforts to ensure that nuclear energy is used for peaceful purposes. 2005 Nobel Peace Prize On 7 October 2005, El Baradei and the IAEA were announced as joint recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts to prevent nuclear energy from being used for military purposes and to ensure that nuclear energy, for peaceful purposes, is used in the safest possible way." El Baradei donated all of his winnings to building orphanages in Cairo. The IAEA's winnings are being spent to train scientists from developing countries to use nuclear techniques in combating cancer and malnutrition. El Baradei is the fourth Egyptian to receive the Nobel Prize, following Anwar Sadat 1978 in Peace, Naguib Mahfouz 1988 in Literature, and Ahmed Zawail 1999 in Chemistry. In his Nobel lecture, El Baradei said that the changing landscape of nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament may be defined by the emergence of an extensive black market in nuclear material and equipment, the proliferation of nuclear weapons and sensitive nuclear technology, and the stagnation in nuclear disarmament. To combat proliferation, El Baradei has suggested keeping nuclear and radiological material out of the hands of extremist groups, tightening control over the operations for producing the nuclear material that could be used in weapons, and accelerating disarmament efforts. El Baradei also stated that only 1% of the money spent to develop new weapons would be enough to feed the entire world and that, if we hope to escape self-destruction, nuclear weapons should have no place in our collective conscience and no role in our security. United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan said that he was delighted that the 2005 Nobel Peace Prize had been awarded to the UN nuclear watchdog and its head, El Baradei. The Secretary General congratulates him and the entire staff of the agency, past and present, on their contributions to global peace. A spokesman for Annan said. Topic: <laughs> Postage issues. Egypt Post on 8 October 2005 commemorated this award by issuing a set of two postage stamps. On 1 June 2009, to commemorate fourth extraordinary session of Papu Plenipotentiary Conference held in Cairo between 1 and 9 June, Egypt Post issued a set of 16 stamps bearing African winners of Nobel Prizes, among which one is of El Baradei. Topic. Other awards and recognition 
El Baradé has received many awards for his work as director of the IAEA. Decoration for Services to the Republic of Austria Grand Decoration in Gold with Sash 2009 Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany Grand Cross with Star and Sash 2010 El Athur Award Algeria's highest national distinction The Franklin D Roosevelt Four Freedoms Award 2006 James Park Morton Interfaith Award Golden Plate Award from the American Academy of Achievement JIT Trainer Award from Georgetown University for Distinction in the Conduct of Diplomacy Human Security Award from the Muslim Public Affairs Council Prix de la Fondation Award from the Crans Montana Forum Golden Dove of Peace Prize from the President of Italy Honorary Patron of the University Philosophical Society 2006 of Trinity College, Dublin, following in the footsteps of previous Nobel Peace Prize winners Desmond Tutu and John Hume Grand Cordon of the Order of the Nile, the highest Egyptian civilian decoration, awarded by the Government of Egypt Award for Distinguished Contribution to the Peaceful Worldwide Use of Nuclear Technology, awarded by the World Nuclear Association in September 2007 2006, Freedom Medal The Mostar 2007 International Peace Award of the Mostar Center for Peace and Multiethnic Cooperation The 2008, Peacebuilding Award of the East-West Institute The International Seville Noto Prize for Peace, Security and Intercultural Dialogue The 2008 Indira Gandhi Prize for Peace, Disarmament and Development The 2009 Delta Prize for Global Understanding, sponsored by the University of Georgia and Delta Air Lines The 14 International Grupo Compostela Zunta de Galicia Prize Breastplate of the Russian Foreign Ministry Contribution to International Cooperation Order of Francisque Scorina, Belarus Order of Friendship of Peoples Belarus El Baradé has also received honorary doctoral degrees from the University of Dublin, Trinity College, New York University, the University of Maryland, the American University in Cairo, the Free Mediterranean University LUM in Bari, Italy, Soka University of Japan, Tsinghua University of Beijing, the Polytechnic University of Bucharest, the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, Konkuk University in Seoul, the University of Florence, the University of Buenos Aires the National University of Cuyo in Argentina, Amherst College and Cairo University. He is also a member of the Mo Ibrahim Foundation's Ibrahim Prize Committee. Topic: Publications. El Baradé is the author or editor of several books. El Baradé, Muhammad. The Age of Deception: Nuclear Diplomacy in Treacherous Times. New York, Metropolitan Books, Henry Holt & Co., 2011. ISBN 9780805093506 According to WorldCat, the book is held in 915 libraries translated into Polish, German, Dutch, and Arabic El Baradé, Mohamed, E. I. Nuogugu, and John M. Rames, editors. The International Law of Nuclear Energy, Basic Documents. Dordrecht, M. Nyhoff, 1993.2 v, ISBN 9780792317000 Topic: Publications El Baradé, Muhammad. Atoms for Peace, A Pictorial History of the International Atomic Energy Agency, 1957-2007. Vienna, International Atomic Energy Agency, 2007. ISBN 9789201038074. El References External links Column Archive at the Guardian Annotated Bibliography for Muhammad El Baradei at the Alsos Digital Library for Nuclear Issues Director General Dr. Muhammad El Baradei at IAEA Muhammad El Baradei on IMDb Muhammad El Baradei on Charlie Rose Appearances on C-SPAN Muhammad El Baradei collected news and commentary at Al Jazeera English
Muhammad El Baradei collected news and commentary. The Guardian. Muhammad El Baradei collected news and commentary at the Jerusalem Post. Muhammad El Baradei collected news and commentary. The New York Times. Works by or about Muhammad El Baradei in libraries. WorldCat catalog. Profile: Muhammad El Baradei, BBC News, the 30th of January 2011. 2005 Nobel Peace Prize lecture at nobelprize.org. Muhammad El Baradei at the Academy of Achievement articles the 2005 Nobel Peace Prize. Photo say by Scott London. What price? Peace. Muhammad El Baradei, LLM, 71, JSD, 74, NYU Law School, Autumn 2006. Paul C. Warnke Lecture on International Security, A World Free of Nuclear Weapons, Illusion or Possibility, Council on Foreign Relations, 4 November 2009 Full transcript of BBC's interview with Dr. El Baradei, May 2007 CASMII Washington intercepts El Baradei phone calls for information to displace him, Washington Post, the 11th of December 2004 Nomination of El Baradei Nomination of El Baradei El Baradei, I will run for the presidential elections if it is free and fair El Baradei campaign starts with a banner working together so El Baradei can be our president Wide reactions on El Baradei's declaration of his candidacy for the presidency A Facebook group dedicated to nominate Mohamed El Baradei to the presidency of Egypt in 2011 El Baradei set conditions to run for Egypt's presidential election El Baradei, I joined the opposition in rejecting the inheritance of the Egyptian presidency, demanding reforms from Mubarak and a new constitution Did El Baradei become the youth candidate in the presidential election? The Egyptian government campaign against El Baradei following his announcement of his intention to run for president Mufid Shahab, Minister of Legal Affairs, if El Baradei considering the presidency of Egypt he is mistaken. Dr. El Baradei dialogue with Al Arabiya. El Baradei in a comprehensive interview with Al Sharouk 1 to 3, I call on Mubarak to form a committee to draft a new constitution. El Baradei in a comprehensive interview with Al Sharouk 2 to 3, the Egyptian people deserve better life than the one they're living El Baradei in a comprehensive interview with Al Sharouk 3 to 3 in Egypt people are living below the level of the average human life wide reactions from El Baradei's interview with Al Sharouk El Baradei's interview with Al Sharouk renew the debate over his personality and his program the debate over El Baradei's interview with Al Sharouk continues Al Sharouk readers open hot files with El Baradei Al Sharouk readers open hot files with El Baradei too. Dr. Said Sadiq, Professor of Political Sociology at the American University, El Baradei is modest and civilized. And the opportunity of him winning is enhanced day after day. Isaac calls for a public reception to El Baradei. Health Minister Hatim El Gabali, El Baradei is not fit to be president. Gamal is the fittest for the job if his father refuses to run for president. A seminar on sectarian tensions, El Baradei gave a kiss of life. El Baradei in Cairo on 1 February. <laughs>